In this video, I am going to talk about microservices distributed tracing and log aggregation concept. First, we will look at how log works in a monolithic context and then we will move to the microservices context for better understanding. So let's start. Let's assume we have a Maven application called Byte Programming and in order to make a deployable file of this application, we would need to run MVN clean install and this could be triggered either manually or through CI/CD pipeline. This will create byte programming.jar.var or .er depending upon what you have mentioned in the pom.xml as a packaging. Here we have a Tomcat and we are deploying it inside the WebOS folder of the Tomcat. Now the application is up and ready to use. Let's assume that we hit a request. And while processing of the request, the log is generated and this log is called application logs. So on a broader terms, there are two types of log generally happens in any enterprise project. First is application logs, second is audit logs. Let's say the path of application logs is slash vr slash logs slash bp.log. bp.log is the file that contains all the volumes of logs generated by the application byte programming. Now, the critical touch points that we do in the application is going to be stored in audit logs and these audit logs could be stored either in any external systems or the database also. Coming to the question, who is going to use these logs, developer or the operation teams? So if you look from the developer standpoint of view, you have access to the dev server, you have access to the dev database. So you can easily monitor those logs and do debugging also. You don't have access to the production server or the production DB. So in case of user, or you can say the productions, operation teams is going to monitor and analyze these logs. So once they got an error, they are going to raise a defect. Now again think, this bp.log is containing huge amount of logs generated by the application that is deployed inside this Tomcat. And for a particular error and this stack trace, how the operation teams is going to give you data from this log file that is containing huge amount of logs. In order to do that, whenever an error comes, we uniquely identify that error and the stack trace of the error with the ID. This ID is generally called correlation ID and it uniquely identifies the error. So the operation team will search for that correlation ID inside this bp.log and it will give the stack trace of that error. So this was how in a monolithic project or uh, in the monolithic application, the logging works. Moving forward, we will try to implement the same concept in case of microservice and then we will understand why the distributed tracing has come into the picture. Now, let's assume that we have three microservices, microservice 1, microservice 2, microservice 3 and a request is coming to microservice 1 and it is spanning over microservice 2, microservice 3 and after processing of the request, the response is returned back. Also, let's assume that the logs of this microservice 1 is stored in a file called ms underscore one dot log. Similarly, for microservice 2, we have file ms underscore 2 dot log and for microservice 3 we have a file 
called ms underscore three dot log. Now let's move back to this request. Now this request that is coming here to microservice one is spanning over microservice two and microservice three. Now again ask the same question that we did in monolithic. Are you able to visualize the logs of this request that is coming to microservice one at a single place? If any error comes, will it help the operation teams for the stack trace or will the operation team is able to monitor and analyze the applications properly? The answer would be no. The reason is this ms1.log scope is limited to this microservice one. Similarly, ms underscore two dot log scope is limited to microservice two and ms underscore three dot log scope is limited to microservice three. In order to answer the questions that we have asked earlier, we would need the concept of distributed tracing and log aggregation. This is the reason where multiple microservices exist and they are dependent on each other and a single request is spanning over multiple microservices we would require distributed tracing and log aggregation but before we move let's have a clear understanding on the few points related to distributed tracing and log aggregation it is not mandatory to introduce log tracing in every microservices architecture. This distributed log tracing and monitoring is used to monitor the behavior of the application and trigger specific alerts based on error or exceptions. If you're using an AWS, you can trigger specific alerts through AWS CloudWatch if any errors or exception is raised. It totally depends on how you have designed your architecture of the application and the microservices you have created are either independent in terms of resource processing or not. Now coming back to the same point, we will answer those two questions previously asked on the basis of distributed tracing concept. Here we have the request that is heating to microservice 1 and spanning to microservice 2 and microservice 3. So what if I associate this request that is heating to microservice 1 with a unique ID called trace ID having value 1. Now if this request is spanning to microservice 2, I will pass the same trace ID to microservice 2 and since this request is also spanning to microservice 3, I will pass the same trace ID to the microservice 3. So if you see, the value of the trace ID is same, 1, 1 and 1. So if I pull this request or you can say in more particular, if I pull this trace ID, I would be able to visualize the request. Similarly, we have another ID called span ID that is associated with the microservices only. So this span ID 1 is associated with microservice 1. Similarly, for microservice 2 and 3, we would have a span ID. And this span ID is going to be unique in a particular microservice context. So if I say trace ID 1, I'm able to visualize this request that is spanning to microservice 2 and microservice 3. So if I say span ID 1, I'm able to visualize this microservice 1. So this is the concept of distributed tracing. It gives you two unique ID, trace ID and span ID, and these IDs are passed in the request headers and the response so that you would be able to monitor and visualize a single request that is spanning to multiple microservices. Moving ahead, the benefit of this distributed tracing with visualization and analysis is going to become easier. So 
for this request if you able to visualize let's say this line is going to represent the whole request timeline and the response timeline so when this request is hitting to microservice one a span id one we have created so this gives you a particular time interval a span id is nothing but the api endpoint that is going to hit and it will give you the corresponding time of request and response similarly for microservice 2 we have a span id 12 and for microservice 13 we have a span id 13 so this is a kind of visualization for the operational teams we will look at a practical example a screenshot of spring sleuth and jipkin at later point of time in this video now moving ahead before we proceed to the basic interview questions related to distributed tracing let's revise some points related to distributed tracing and log aggregation so if we talk about distributed tracing we learn two important ids first is trace id that means a unique id to trace the path of request if request spans multiple services another is a span id a span id uniquely identifies the request related to single service only so if you ask the difference between two first the scope of trust id is global and another the scope of span id is local to the service only in case of log aggregation we mean that storing of logs for visualization and analysis in any external or centralized place it could be db it could be file servers or it could be external systems like splunk also the major disadvantage of this distributed tracing and logging apart from the complexity that you have introduced in the applications architecture is additional infra setup and cost now Let's look at the basic interview questions that may be asked to you. What do you understand by distributed tracing in microservices context? What is log aggregation? What is trace ID, span ID? Is there necessity to use distributed tracing and log aggregation? any disadvantage of distributed tracing and logging all these questions are basic and related to the concept of distributed tracing only the further questions on distributed tracing and logging could be on the ways of implementation so if you look at the ways of implementation of distributed tracing and logging we would mainly have first Spring Cloud Sleuth and Jipkin combination, Open Tracing and Jagger, or ELK Stack. ELK stands for Elasticsearch, Log Stack, and Kibana. I will try to make a practical videos on Spring Cloud Sleuth and Jipkin combination or ELK Stack. But in this video, we will look at a screenshot that is combination of Spring Cloud Sleuth and the Jipkin. So if you look at this screenshot, you will find that this Jipkin server is internally running on 9411 port and it has trace ID 9E66382, something like this. So if I hit this trace ID, I am seeing three microservices, student dashboard service, student detail service, Zool API gateway. And this is the visualization that I have talked earlier in case of microservice tracing. So the first request I am hitting through Azul API gateway, it is routed to a student dashboard service and again it is gone to student detail service. And from processing here, the response is returned to a student dashboard service and then to the Azul API gateway. So this is the reason if you look student detail service is called one time student dashboard service is called two times zool api gateway is called two times this include request and response as well and here 
if you see the line you're getting the time that is taken for the request and the response to be processed so if you see student dashboard service this is the span id get slash student dashboard slash odd students for student details service this is the span id post slash student slash all students so post is nothing but http method get is nothing but http method and this is the time taken by these two services this is a very simple example of a distributed tracing in real time it could be a multiple microservices and this board will look quite clear in the terms of analysis so this was all about distributed tracing and log aggregation concept in the next video of this series i am going to show you a practical demo either with spring cloud sleuth and the zipkin or elk stack the choice is going to be yours if you like this video you can provide the feedback comments in the comment section or hit the like button stay tuned and subscribe for more upcoming videos